Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Shadow Fiend. Radiant team pick. Queen of Dusk. <laughs> Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Hello, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Beyond the Star Summer presentation Star. of the Star Letter European, or sorry, Star Letter I League American Vision. At number 13, we're looking at Jigit Chaos versus Root, second game in this best of three series, and we're looking at 1 0 advantage for Digital Chaos as they were absolutely able to trounce uh, Root in game number one, not even 20 minute game, uh, with a lot of late game course. I mean, they could have take that, taken that game to an hour, an hour and a half, but they took it to 20 minutes, and Digital Chaos just put on a show. So we're going to be looking forward to see what Root answer Radiant back with. Uh, going to be seeing a, a brand new draft here in game number two. Thanks once again for tuning in. Self and Blaze, and let's check it out. So, we're going to be looking at the opener of Wyvern and Slaughter as the bans for Root Gaming. They leave the Gyrocopter in the pool phase 2, but you better believe they're still scared of it, and they will ban out TC Gyro in that second phase. Interestingly enough, they have gone for not only the Shadow Fiend first pick, but going for the Silencer follow-up after the Queen of Pain and Tusk are picked in response. So that that's very, very interesting. Obviously, um... Queen of Pain and Tusk are very much about initiating. They're able to do a lot when they're able to jump in and get their spells off. A silencer now, rather than later, is what Ten really just remaining. I find peculiar. Because you can easily pick up silencer in a Five seconds third remaining. pick or fourth pick. And while I feel that that hero is generally underrated and is actually insanely powerful in the right hands, I still... Feel like you could get a little bit more by just picking one of the more flexible here uh, that gives away less information and and all that but they they want the silencer they get the silencer they've got it with the sf so they've got global silence requiem some really good team fight every couple of minutes on the other hand of course uh you're going to be relying a lot on your dire jungle stacks so we'll look for a hero that's sufficient in that capacity and then they still have to flesh out their off lane but interestingly enough Reserve time. Plane bans are not there for DC. They're actually punishing the alternative support. Instead of banning out an offlaner like you would normally see when you already have Doom and Slardar and Tusk out of the pool, you would ban out like Darkseer and Clockwork. Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, in this case, no, they, they are actually banning out support. They banned out the Bane. And obviously, you get things like the Nightmare, Double Raise, Nightmare Requiem. Um, Fiend's Grip in general is great in this kind of a game. But yeah, they they actually are going to be looking at something else. Maybe they'll go for the bubble clockwork here. I think there's some good value in that actually. Now now that I think about it, the reason they wouldn't ban it out is because they probably want it for themselves. If you can close in with the on the shadow fiend with the clockwork, and obviously just get some cogs down after your hookshot, that's enough to make it so that the silencer is something that you can wait out. Especially if bubble gets a force staff, but that's assuming the clockwork. We'll Radiant see. Team pick. So right now, Beastmaster and Bane banned out. Hard lockdown, so you can expect something a little bit greedier. Um, yeah, they're going to go for like an agility late game carry, because obviously the counter to that is going to be a, a long duration disable. Um, so Ember Spirit I think would be okay. You would have to obviously go for like a Manta style against the Silencer, a BKB. I've seen a Lotus Orb once, that was weird. Um, 
Or you could just go for something that's even less spell dependent, but still doesn't want to be hard disabled. Ten oh, I mentioned the Slark before, he's a pretty good example. Um, the Anti-Mage could be coming into play once again, I think he would be pretty strong here as well. For now though, what we're looking at is a Spirit Breaker along with the Tusk. And the Queen of Pain most likely going for an alternative solo lane. So Quap versus SF mid, Zoomable, and then uh, Tusk and Spirit Breaker going to be probably that dual offlane if they get the chance. One thing I really like about Spirit Breaker is that he completely ignores most of what Silencer does. Once you start charging, you don't stop charging. Silence or not, uh, maybe he won't let out a loud moo in the process, but he will connect with his damage, and that's the key thing. So I think overall Spirit Breaker is probably one of the better heroes to have on your team during that. Um, picking up Tidehunter for Root, it, it seems clear that they are emphasizing 5-on-5 five five team fight and making it so that when they have their Five cooldowns up, ring. they are gods on this map. And when they do have the cooldowns unavailable, they just play defensively. Try to uh, buy some time. I actually like to see a Disruptor here, to be honest. Uh, I think Disruptor would be a very powerful pick. There's a couple of synergies uh, to look at, like the fact that Spearbreaker marks your target with Charge of Darkness. You can still see him, and therefore you can glimpse him back and get the follow-up disable from the Spearbreaker immediately. Or uh, the fact that you can get the Static Storm, counter synergy against the Tide Hunter. You can still kill him off without him getting a spell off, thanks to uh, the uh, ground target aspect of the Static Storm. It continually prevents Tide Hunter from casting. But we're not going to be seeing the Disruptor, we're going to be seeing Shadow Shaman here. So Shadow Shaman is much more puff, push emphatic, and obviously if he gets the wards down, it, they really have a lot of good physical damage uh, coming out against certain targets. So essentially what they can do is they can drop the wards on the tower, get, have be kind of committed to that objective, and then even if the silence are globals, they can kind of keep their distance from the wards, do their own thing, and distract root. Hmm, could this be a Naga Siren game though? That would be interesting. So right now we've got offlane Tidehunter, presumably the dual support of Silencer and Dazzle, and the Shadow Fiend in the mid. I, I think it's too greedy. I, I, I like the Naga Siren versus a lot of these heroes, but I think it's too greedy. You can't have Shadow Fiend and, and Naga Siren on the same team. It just it costs too much. They take too many resources off the map. The reason I say Naga is really great here is, I mean, Ensnare is pretty good against Spirit Breaker, um, Quid of Pain. Can, it can be good against her. Yeah, but most importantly, I would say it's great against Shadow Shaman wards. You can reset the fight every time you song, you kill the wards that are not immune to Song of the Siren, and then you just kill all the other heroes, following it up with Ravage and that and Global and that kind of thing. And that forces every member of Digital Chaos to buy BKBs. Ten Once again, seconds, it's too greedy. Shadow Fiend and Naga, one of them is going to be too under farmed, so I don't think they're going to follow through with that kind of a pick. Slark ban, TA ban. It looks like the, the Root seemed to think that Queen of Pain is not going to be in the mid lane here, and I'm curious what that alternative is, but now we're going to be seeing the Ursa. Um, been a lot more popular lately in the fact that he is able to attack really quickly against things like the Undying Tombstone. Obviously, he's always been popular against the Phoenix Egg, but I find it interesting to pick him up here. He can't cast his ultimate during the Global Silence, obviously, which means that he might not actually be able to take advantage of that mitigating effect. And along with that, the Dazzle is able to keep a target that he's pursuing alive for a very long time, thanks to the Shallow Grave. So while Ursa's general role in the team fight is to go on a single target, kill them off within two seconds, and go on to the next one, in this case, he's going to be disabled, he's going to be kited, and there's going to be Shallow Grave in play. It's going to be a little bit difficult, unless the rem other four members of Digital Chaos focus on controlling that Dazzle and making sure that he can't play in that capacity. One thing that I really do like about Ursa in comparison to traditional carry, so boy, I'll get to that in a second. But I do like the Ursa against Tidehunter, because Anchor Smash does not affect Ursa at all. He's all getting his damage from the Fury Swipes, so he's able to still ignore the fact that his base damage is missed for the most part. And uh, yeah, we're going to be seeing Troll Warlord as this last pick here, coming in for Will Easy. Um, pretty interesting, obviously. He got nerfed pretty heavily after his ties to the top of, of the top tier in 6.83, and he got nerfed hard. Um, his damage in the laning phase was reduced because I think Berserker's Rage, level 1, doesn't provide as much, or any. And uh, his ultimate duration is a big thing in my mind. It's like a 5 second duration now, which you can obviously glyph during, uh, you can snowball during, you can just wait it out. Buy yourself a little, little bit of time here.
But uh, we'll see. So obviously has some good value. I like the miss chance in particular. Uh, it's going to be a little bit annoying for the entire lineup of Digital Chaos to have to deal with that. But let's go through some rosters. We've got Aoi 2000 immediately. Before he even buys the courier, he goes and TPs, drops the ward down. This is something that he just likes to do to establish uh, all over the map. And in this case, he's going to establish uh, an understanding of the enemy's position. This observer wouldn't play. And then, of course, the, the courier just gets dropped by Buryu after the fact. So it's going to be Aoi 2000 on the Shadow Shaman here, so, uh, supporting the safe lane, though he won't be able to lock down the tides for very long thanks to the Kraken shell. You have the support played by Buryu, that's going to be the Spirit Breaker. He's going to be roaming all around the map, and he should be finding some kill opportunities with Tusk as well. Um, speaking of Tusk, that's going to be Bulba here on the offlane, and uh, he went for a TP play of his own. He's going to play right here and that seems to be uh close enough to block the camp i would like it's it's right on the line but i think it's just left of the line so where normally you expect like any war that blocks the camp to be here or even in this spot here these sentries won't as often hit this area so i think bulba is going to find himself a little bit of value there as far as level one bounty rune it looks like 747 has cl laid claim to the bottom bounty rune it's going to force digital chaos to rotate the queen of pain to the top one uh, and that's going to be you are playing the Queen of Pain, and that wraps up Digital Chaos. Looking over at Root on the dire side, we've got Derp Derp on the support silencer. Looks like he may be playing a bit of a five position. No, I, yeah, this this was a single ward purchased by Derp Derp, and I'm probably the flying courier or the, the courier rather. So he's just going to be zoning, he's going to be harassing, and he's going to be supporting here in the mid to try to give 747 easier uh, souls early on. Does he go for Glaives though, or just kind of last word? Last word's sufficient here, but he goes for the Glaives just to make sure. And he doesn't, of course, aggro creeps with this, so the Raiding Creeps do their own thing, while Derp Derp trades back and forth. Raiding downhill to up, it does pose some risks, as you are, of course, uh, risking the uphill mischance. Then uh, you're taking a lot of damage, of course, from the Queen of Pain. Now we're going to see this Spearbreaker charging right through. The healing salve will come, but Derp Derp's still going to be taking some major damage here. Queen of Pain blinking forward, just hit level 2, that's going to be the first blood on to Derp Derp. They'll even get some good hits on the Shadow Fiend, though of course they get that 17% bash out with Buryu only level 1. So, inadvisable to Derp Derp, and what's worse, not only feeding the first blood to his opponent here, the one that he's trying to zone out, the Queen of Pain, but now Derp Derp has skilled Glaives level 1, and it hasn't gotten anything for it. Like, that's just setting him back so much. Queen of Pain's going to get her bottle, and that harassment is completely nullified. I'm um, hearing another Spirit Breaker charge, but this time it looks like to be on the Shadow Fiend, who has power already. Derp Derp trying to put that pressure out, but Buryu just in the neighborhood will hit, hit a couple hits on Derp Derp. In the meantime, that's going to be the last word coming out. It's going to be a bottle delivered, and he'll just bottle sip to make sure he survives. In the meantime, that is going to be a raise. Another bottle sip keeps him alive, and 747 under tower will be going down. He had a ceiling self. Oh my god. He goes down. And uh, that's unfortunate. That is not the way you want to go uh they under they didn't see the bottle that's the bottom line they just didn't see the bottle delivered and that Illusion. game changer yeah yagami lives or you are whatever his name is he wants to fake nick he wants to tag up or something else that he's gonna get called that by accident every once in a while anyways uh, um yeah so he survives through the last word with the one bottle sip survives through the raise with an all-around impressive stuff and they actually get that turnaround kill, just insane. Killing off the silencer for the second time, killing off the shadow fiend for the first, and a bottle refill for uh, you are as they pursue forward. Just another easy kill here, and there is nothing that Derp Derp can do at only level two. We're gonna see Yagami take a lot of damage though, and the Dazzle can do a lot with Grave TP. So they're actually gonna punish the Queen of Pain for her aggression. 747 just standing his ground, dropping those raises, and relying on the Dazzle to bail him out. Uh, DC kind of going through the motions where they, they think every fight will just be a repeat of the last. In this, this case, uh, they, they throw out the wild card in the Dazzle. So, good rotation there from Stan King. Does leave uh, Will Easy up top, but he's happy to just keep last hitting up uh, to 16 and 4, while TC is going to be sitting on 15 and 8 here on the Ursa. Mango for now, maybe looking for a Vlad's pretty soon, but ooh, this is actually unexpected. The Bulba rotation is going to be huge. Going with a Snowball play 47, they won't even put for you in the Snowball. They'll charge and Snowball at the same time, have the Ice Shards, and have the kill. 
just beautifully executed. And they're gonna look for one more. While Buryu does have to back off, Derp Derp is still stuck here. And while he's fighting under tower, there's no TP for him. He will be going down, and that is gonna be a huge momentum swing for DC once more. I feel like Root are really dependent on getting a couple of all the key ultimates online. Obviously the Ravage and the Global Silence being the most impactful one. So, as it is right now, the Derp Silencer is just not working out. Now he's tank up as best he can, going Bracer Gaming, and I just, I feel like it's just uh, fighting a losing battle at this point, since you're just, you're constantly stealing experience from the Shadow Fiend, neither of you is getting good level progression, and you're both just feeding further and further, and uh, it has only net him, the, all of these exchanges, all of these skirmishes that Silencer often enjoys, has only netted him two stolen intelligence just isn't enough to make up for everything that he's brought to this lane. Failed to acquire elsewhere. You can see actually some damage onto Willy Z, but the melee whirling axes that could uh, make things difficult. Along with that, of course, you got Stan King hanging out. Time with a TP once more. AUI just blocking off the Ancients for now. Tide, yeah, being the main hero to farm that up with the Anchor Smash. So right now, Tide has gone for a 0-1 build. Not only making it much more difficult for Aoi to harass him as a, a 24 damage block, but making it so that the crack control triggers more often. Unfortunately, it seems to be infrequently enough that that last hit will come through the phase boots online for TC. So, crack control does trigger every 550 health at level 2, but as you can see, it just came out too late for it to be, uh... It's for the tide, and it's the strength of the shackles here. In fact, level shackles. Oh, I'm so glad that Aoi did this. Because uh, I actually talked about this when the patch came out. People were, were really making fun of it. But I said that there are some situations, not not most games, but some games where you'd actually level shackles over Aether Shock and uh, definitely over Hex. And we see it right here. AUI getting the extra damage, getting some extra duration, setting up Ursa for kills. And that's just high value. I'm not sure he'll max it, but he definitely gets the value of le leveling it. And of course, it's only a 10 second cooldown. So it's going to be very dependent on getting control of that Shadow Shaman, getting disabled against him. And uh, we could see a lot of really good value coming from the Rasta pick here. Nice smoke movement once again. Smoke. Looking for 747. He looks for the rune. There's an illusion, and they go on the wrong lines. But they follow through to the west where the ice shards block him off, and the Shadow Fiend just can't do anything but die for the third time. It's a, it's a really hard game for Root right now. They feel like they have control. They have like wards in place to try to see what's happening. But one smoke just turns everything topsy-turvy and uh, gets uh, ugly very quickly. Boots on everyone for Digital Chaos. Phase boots on the Ursa. Nothing of the sort for the Silencer. Dazzle and Silencer both moving at their base movement speeds here, and it is actually very detrimental to their ability to fight. I actually see potential multiple raises on Buryu, but he doesn't go up to the high ground here. He just keeps on walking, and uh, as a result, stays healthy. More Bottle Crow coming out for Yawar. Gonna be looking for the next rune spawn, probably on bottom lane. So that's the best opportunity to use Sonic Wave uh, to kill off the Tide Hunter once again. And meanwhile, we do see TC stacking up for himself. Oh, Mango Eaten. They want to go here. Aoi 2000 looking for the shackles, getting range in just a second, and they will be able to just hammer into this tide. No Roshan Bash, so they can charge through on their next target, who's the Dazzle. He'll grave, but he can't find an easy way to escape. Not against a raging Ursa with the phase boots. He'll get a double kill for himself. And now they can easily take this tier 1 tower. Making it easier and easier for them to look at Roshan. One Morbid Mask is really all it takes these days for Ursa to have Roche capability. Digging out this tier 1 tower, generating so much momentum. In fact, they're going to get this Mass Serpent Ward very shortly. One more Creep Wave, we got their level 6 on Shadow Shaman. Up top, we do see Willy Z fighting for his life against Bulba and Yuar, but even without the Sonic Wave, they find a nice little kill. DD Rune for Spirit Breaker, Bounty Rune for Guap. C747 have to go right back to his jungle and farm up some single stacks. He just doesn't have anything left in the tank at this point. Looking over at early net worth, we see a two core lead for Digital Chaos, and that's going to become a lot more if they can get the Roche, which I think is pretty important in this game here. 
4,000 net worth favoring Digital Chaos. 1,500 experience, and uh, actually a dive on the Tide Hunter here. Just going in with Gush and Anchor. Might be doing some good damage, but it's not actually going to be enough to kill off the Tusk. Meanwhile, down bottom, pop in the ultimate. The Troll Warlord is able to bring down Aoi since he doesn't have the Hex. Normally in that situation, you like to hex and run, but like I said, he, he wanted to get that second point in shackles, and it's uh it's served him well, but in this case, it does cost him his life. Tier 1 mid. Probably could see like some, some 3 or 4 man movement towards this tower. I feel like this is another easy objective if they just find the right angle. Um, do they have? Do they want to commit another smoke? They certainly have another smoke, but the question is what, whether or not they want to commit it. Right now, Bulba has it in his inventory. They're on the lines of the map. I think they want to smoke around here and then wrap once again to try to kill off this Shadow Fiend uh, for the fourth time. Especially since most Shadow Fiends skill up their Radiance ultimates into level 9, and that's the timing that uh, we're going to see prevented. Yeah, they smoke over here, but they're still making their move. The question is, do they bring TC to the pit and cover it, or do they actually wrap for a kill? Really easy. Just trying to farm Ancients at low HP. Owie and Bulba are going to be going. They're going to do both. They're going to kill off 747, kill off Derp Derp, and get the stun as well. Tanking, dropping very low here, but it's going to be the tower that is going to be in most danger, and there's really nothing they can do. Right. Just clean objective being sued. They'll have to tank up a few power shots, but his master rewards are doing some real work here. Tion has the Ravage. Maybe he looks to go for the Deny. Roshan, a moment longer and it's going down. He's not even going to pop the Enrage for it. He's just going to kill it clean. So they get Roshan. Power looks to be maybe denied. No, the Mass Server Wards do a little bit too much damage and it goes down too. They're getting everything. Derp in some real trouble here. They're not wanting to commit the Ravage, but they have to and it only hits on TC. It's not a, not a full on Cheever, but it is not what they needed. The Enrage and Phase run away from TC. 747 with the long range raise. Auto, but doesn't get the race and he'll go on down. Now, where are you charging onto Suan who doesn't have Ravage? Ice shards to block off a path of retreat. But whether or not they want to retreat, it comes down to the Queen of Pain. He gets silenced. He can't even get the last auto attack on Derp Derp. Boba looking for the snowball up to the high ground. The shards onto the Derp Derp. And uh, now has to probably run away. <laughs> gets gushed, gets raised, and that's actually going to give some really good kills to Root in the whole process. Keep TC alive. He keeps that Aegis and he walks away. Flight recap, very important here. Look at that kill swing. Silencer going down pretty early there. Two for three is the kill count. But what you actually see is going to be a massive influx of gold for Root. I mean, a lot of people don't put the numbers in comparison, but 2260 gold in a game where you're like nearly seven, like 6,000 behind, that's a third of the lead just gone. And that's just immense. Root have a lot of comeback potential if they can use their ultimates wisely, but of course Derp Derp still has to get there. Levels right now, level 4, Dazzle, level 5, Silencer. While uh, two cores on the Digital Chaos side are on the cusp of reaching their level 11. Mechanism wait for the Shadow Fiend, this definitely can help. Mechanism, Global, Ravage, all very key cooldowns for finding those 5 and 5 fights. Oh, Will Easy gonna get the silence to cover him as the silence are very recently hit level 6, but while that breaks the shackles, we're still gonna be see the Sonic Wave on the flank here, and Stanking might have to make a decision of who to save. It's not gonna be Will Easy as he's fighting it out on the eastern side, and it is definitely going down. TC is just running in with the Enrage, has the shackles to back him up, gets down 747, and doesn't die to the Dazzle! They keep the Aegis, find themselves a triple kill, find a five-man wipe for one. And that is a very sad day for Root. Nullifying the team fight they, they won out to Autumn Rune is uh, the fact that they didn't have the Ravage available, most, mostly. Um, obviously there was no Requiem there either because of mana issues, but I would say the Ravage is the key thing. I kind of feel like if the Dazzle hadn't gotten separated from the Troll, that would have been a lot better too. Troll was very clearly going to be the first guy dying in that fight, but he ran from the Dazzle rather than to him, and Dazzle never graved at all. So not really getting any value out of that one, unfortunately. And of course, most importantly, that AK just is still intact, so Ursa for the dive pretty soon. We have his Sanj. Bleated his Vlads. 
Orb of Venom, Yasha. But I'm assuming that, that is gonna be the SMY. Mechanism Bulba, jeez. I wasn't even looking at Bulba's items. He suddenly found a lot for himself. Howie 2000? Midas? Arcane's Wand? That's gonna be Aghanim Scepter. Dave, yeah, he's gonna go gags this game, and it is not gonna take too long to fin find that uh, with a, a Midas as early as this one. And they're not really slowing their roll at all, as Bulba's gonna find that mechanism uh, from that offlane position so easily. Go for my armor. I don't know the last time I've ever seen an Urn Tidehunter. It's not a bad item, it's just you don't really bother with. In this case, he just he needs to beef up. 47, gonna get caught by Buryu's initial strike, but he's not following through with the Nether Strike. The Dazzle's behind him, and really DC aren't ready for an engagement like that. Gonna be a five-man play down mid, thanks to the Ravage. Global Silence cooling down now, they are ready to go, and they pop the Battle Trance, forcing the Glyph immediately. And like I said, the shorter Battle Trance, you can just Glyph it, and it will wait out the duration. But do DC actually look to engage in this? There is a TP scroll in Queen of Pain, Chazor Sonic Wave, and here she comes. They're gonna be going for this, at least the Deny, and TC running right in for some blood. He still has that Aegis, he's gonna be the first to use it, and now Will Easy gonna be trying to find a one kill to bounce. It's gonna be on Buryu here, but TC right in the perfect position. Gonna be caught inside the Ravage, wait out the Enrage, while Will Easy caught inside the trees with the Mass Serpent Ward. He'll face Boots away finally, but in the meantime, they've lost their Silencer and nearly lost their Tide. He'll go down to the Scream, and 747 is all alone right now. The Dazzle, meaningless. The Shadow Wave, but what is that gonna matter when Yagami, you are, he blinks right in. Will Easy drops a slow. Gives 747 some distance, but that will be closed very quickly by the snowball and a wall wrist punch to the face. It's another free 20 minute GG. It's DC taking the series 2 0 with the second game not even lasting 15 minutes. That is an 11,000 net worth advantage experience as well. That is an amazing game of Dota for Digital. Just that you seem to mix and match balance of control and damage so efficiently. Shadow Shaman able to control while Ursa does the damage. Tusk and Spearbreak able to really bring the pain to the Shadow Fiend and there's no response.